But you how can I open both these doors? It's a beast. Hey, how heavy is this box? How are we doing? Perfect drafters and new perfect potential drafters. Eh? What that? Well, that's a perfect draft pro, people. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. Looks like a box because it's in a box. That's what's in there. And I'm not going to do an unboxing. Well, I might video the unboxing, but it'll be very quick. I'll speed it up. I'll basically get it out. I'm going to get the machine out. I'm going to stick it on this bar if it fits. And then we're going to take a look at the Perfect Draft Pro. Welcome. It was hard enough to get out the box, out the outer box. Hey, there we go. So, looking at my little timer, I wasn't really timing, but I have got a microphone thing on, which does show me how long I've been recording my ridiculous voice for. It's around about seven minutes. Seven minutes. A lot of that was me faffing away, getting it unboxed, getting the old sellotape off and stuff like that. So I reckon a decent kind of unboxing would be about five minutes. Right. What we got in there, we got in the machine. Thank the Lord, the machine was in there, happy days. With the weight of it, the weight of that box, I pretty much was certain the machine was in there, and it was. We got a handle, people. We got two medallions. In fact, no, we got two little bags of two medallions apiece. We have four medallions. We got those things, the tap was separate to the machine. It wasn't hard to get out. Now then, that, presume, just screws on there. <laughs> that is probably the safest assumption old Baldy's ever done. It screws on well. Right, then we've just got the little old magnets, magnetos, in you go, on you go. We're ready to flow. Not quite, not quite people. Now then, let's address the elephant in the room. How big is it? How big is it? Not a question that I've been asked very often. But it's a size, isn't it? There we go. I don't know if you can see. Can we see? Let's move her across a little bit because there, there from behind, is unveiled the other perfect draft. Now, matters of perspection. Is it perspective? No, it's not perspection. Perspective. Perspection's not even a word. Obviously, that's going to look smaller. It's further behind. We'll get the tape measure out. Let's have a measure. Okay, then, people, I've got my trusty tape measure. And we're talking accuracy personified because I've got it from Wilkinson's, the hardware store. Right, used to work there, filling up shelves. All right, so we're looking height-wise, people, of the actual machine, we're looking at 17 inches. If you're looking in centimetres, you're looking at 43 and a half. With tappage of handle, 46 centimetres, 18 inches. That's what we're looking at, yeah. If we're looking at depth, there, we're looking at, ah, just bang me head. If we're looking at depth, we're looking at about 42 centimetres, 16 and a half inches. Let's head over to the perfect draft. Yeah, the original, the one and only. You're looking at 15 inches, you're looking at 38 centimetres, as opposed to 44. <whistles> With handleage, 
you're looking at 44 and a half. With handleage, you're looking at 45 and a half. So not actually that much difference with handleage. Depth, you're looking at 36, as opposed to, and that's a little bit odd, 42, about 42. Width, width, forgot the width, 29, 29, as opposed oh, to 26. So really, what you'd have to say is, a lot of the size kind of comparisons that have been done, really it's the width that actually is the biggest difference there, rather than the height. And you can see how the actual handle that brought it down into the machine a bit more. So they have thought about those kitchen units and getting them in between your base, your worktop, and your higher wall kitchen units. Now I've seen a few pictures and I've seen people have got it in, just, just, yeah? They've squeezed it in. If you've got a pelmet though, underneath your wall units, you really have got to look at those measurements because you may well not get it in. That's the way it is. You've got to measure it up. Now, one of the key things though is coolage. So that is your proper fridge inside this little beauty. And that's what allows us to go down to that zero degrees for your extra cold lager or now a cheeky little cider. Yes, indeed. So that's what the old gem is there of going down to zero degrees or up to 12, up to 12 degrees. So that variable temperature is very much because there's a proper fridge inside this. Now that helps in a way because if you are trying to snugly fit it in, in between your old kitchen units, you probably haven't quite, quite got to give it the same kind of ventilation as what that little beauty there the perfect draft original what that required because if you snugly fit that in right against your wall right with a kitchen unit above you know that that's going to probably struggle a little bit to get to its three degrees so hopefully less room is needed for this i do like i like how they've brought that tap handle down initial thoughts there tap handle down good move well done other things that i've seen because there are some complaints as with every new product launch, especially when it sells out on day one, let's face it, you know, they have got rid of some of these machines. My yodel man, who wombled up my drive yet again with the big box, he said, I have dropped a lot of these off. <laughs> I have dropped a lot of these boxes off. So they have shifted a fair few. So you're always going to get some, because you do with any new product launch, that are slightly defected. And that's why when I unboxed this, I did it incredibly careful because I have seen some pictures where the scuff marks, where there's kind of some issues, kind of a little bit like the, the silver kind of coating here has come away a little bit or it's a little bit rough. So I'm not seeing that on my perfect draft after first inspection for you. That's all I can say on that because I have taken a little while to unbox it so Beerhawk would have been saying, look, Baldy, they probably wouldn't have said that. They would have used my real name because they would have had my real name. But they may well have said, look, chap, you've had that a week. How have you only just spotted that? So I might have had a bit of a battle on my hands. But looking at the paint job, yeah, I can't see any issues. I can't see any issues. Just having another little gander, the goosey gander, the goose island gander. Is going round it, you know, it's worth doing. You've got to do it right from the outset. I mean, you've paid some dollarage for this, haven't you? You've paid some dollarage. So have a look. Have a look all the way round it. Make sure, I mean, give it a little hug. But have a look. You know, have a look at those lines. And I tell you what, we'll come in in a minute and have a look at these lines because they're pretty nice. And what I've got to say is, to address the aesthetics, you've got to, and everyone's got their own opinion on aesthetics, haven't they? I mean, in the end of the day, when something looks different, you're gonna get the likers, you're gonna get the haters, and that's life. You know, not everyone likes my face. So, I mean, when you look at it, you know, you've got your silver look, haven't you? You've got the silver here, they're trying to make it more modern with that, and obviously you've got your, your sleek black. I don't mind it, yes, it's bigger. It is bigger, but the feel of it, you know, I'm just feeling, I'm feeling it all. Oh, it feels solid, it does. 
I wouldn't say it feels any less solid than the Philips machine. I wouldn't say it feels any more solid than the Philips machine. They're pretty equal. They are. I like the old uh, swirl, the swish for the kind of grate for the uh, air ventilation of the fridge. I like that. They've done it nice. They've put a bit of thought into the design. So top marks there. It's not just a big black brick, is it? It's not, you know. So looking at it, for me, on that initial first impressions, I like it. This handle feels solid. It does feel solid. Nice kind of feel to that. And obviously I've already put this tap unit in. No keggage as yet. Then you've got this. The retractable drip tray. And at the moment, yes, I have got that blue film on it. I will take that off shortly. So that, again, that's a nice little feature. I assume it can come out quite nicely for cleanage of the drip tray. It can. Look at that. You slide it out. You've got it to wash up. And that also, yeah, that also feels solid. Not bad at all. Let's pop her back in. Lovely bubbly. So that's my initial impressions of the design of the machine. And they're just mine. Please do let me know what you think. What do you think to the looks of that compared to the Philips, which I love. So pricing, obviously an important point. This little belter here is going to set you back 385 notes. Yeah. So by no means cheap, but on initial launch, they are giving off 20% if you join that waiting list. So you're looking at what, 75, 77 pounds off this little beauty of a machine right off the bat. And you've got to think, well, if they're doing that on launch, you know, they probably will have a period of time when they will charge full whack. But there's going to be little periods of time where you will get 15% off or 20% off. That's the way it'll go. So you're looking at really around that £300 mark for this machine. I would think that's what you're looking at paying, right? The trading scheme of £150 in beer tokens, that may or may not happen in the future. But with the original Perfect Draft machine, what you've got to think is they generally gave off 15% or 20% at various periods throughout the year. So you've got to think with the markup they've obviously put on this, that's the kind of discount that they would generally give away. So that's the pricing of the little belter. It takes the same kegs, so no difference in price there. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to put a keg in the original, and I'm going to put a keg in the Perfect Draft Pro. We're going to go down to three degrees to make it a fair test and see how long it takes the Pro to get it down to three degrees compared to the original. Now, I'm not expecting you to wait with me while that happens. So I will do that for you. I will set a timer on my phone and then I'll come back and give you the results. And what you will see is that both of these machines are off at the moment. And I thought that's a fair test because the original, you know, that calls from the metal plate at the bottom. So being as that's the case, I thought, you know, it's not fair on this little beauty if we've got the original with a very cold plate straight away. Now, both of these kegs have been in the fridge for over two days. I've got an absolute gem of a keg for the original. It's a Bud Light. And I've got an absolute belter for the Perfect Draft Pro. It is a new cider. It is an Orchard pick. So let's put them both in and let's see what happens. We're both on. Orchard pig for you. And for you, my friend, a Bud Light. Now then, we've got the tap unit, and it's all one unit, yeah? All one unit, which the other one was as well. Same O-ring underneath. Feels pretty heavy, that. It does. But there we go. That's not bad. It's a solid little beauty. Right. Same little spouty O. So let's get that out. Now, instead of the blue buttons, you know, you've got your yellow buttons here. But at the end of the day, they're going to go on the keg. They're going to pop out exactly the same. Then you've got this. You're going to feed that through. There's a nice little diagram there. You're going to feed it through there. You're going to push it down. That's into the keg. Bing, bang, bosh. Nice solid push down. That went on easy enough. 
that goes through. That, that's very easy. That is very easy. The feeding of the pipe is very easy. That has slid through like it's got a load of lube on it. Right, then let's push this down. That's easy. Right. So if we are looking at an immediate comparison, I've got to say, that's easier to put that pipe through that machine than what it is the original. Right, let's spin around. Let's pop the butterfly wings into the groove. And that kind of lifts it up. It lifts it up nicely. So you've actually got some nice spacage underneath the keg, which I suppose will help that airflow help it cool. Let's close it. We're closed. Now I've got a little Wi-Fi thing flashing away just there. It's because it's not connected yet. Not even downloaded the app, people. Right, but that keg's in there. It's cooling. If we go back over to the original, that other keg has loaded at 11 degrees. That's what it's gone in at. So we've got both kegs loaded. I'm going to start my timer and let's have a look at how long they both take to get to three degrees. Okay, party people. So here's the deal so far. You'll see that the indicator on here where it will show the temperature is just spinning around. And that's because I've just connected to the Wi-Fi. It doesn't yet know the temperature. And I've just set up the app. Yeah. Now, that app worked really well. I've got to say, I downloaded it from the Play Store. I'm on Android. Put my user details in, in terms of my you know, username, password, email address. Verified that email address. And it connected to the Wi-Fi just by the press of this little button down here. Very nicely, it's got to be said. Selected my network, remembered my password for the first time ever, and everything was pretty damn smooth with that app. First impressions, very good. Now, like I said to you earlier, I set the old timer going to see how long it takes each machine to get down to three degrees. So I can look at that timer, and I can tell you it took me three and a half minutes to connect this machine to my Wi-Fi, and that included downloading the app, creating an account, and signing up. So people, what happened? What happened with the cooling of the kegs? I took it down, I took the results down. Interesting, interesting stuff. I'm gonna rattle through it. So when this connected, and actually like came up with its first temperature, it was 10 degrees C. It hit the original perfect draft, that Bud Light did, and it came straight in at 8 degrees C. Yeah. Then we've got various points. I'll bang them in a the table. I'll pop them up. But after 1 hour 15 minutes, that's when this had its first droppage to 9 degrees C. The original still on 8 degrees C. 1 hour 41. 8 degrees C. 8 degrees C. They were both equal at that point. Then you got the starting of the kind of... Uh, you know, it was equaling itself out. So two hours, 16 minutes, eight degrees C for the Perfect Draft Pro, seven degrees C for the Perfect Draft. Then it was equal. Two hours, 36 minutes, seven and seven, both of them. Then the Perfect Draft Pro, that's when it took over. Six degrees C at three hours, 12 minutes. The Perfect Draft original was on seven degrees C. Then you can see what happened here. We got like five, five, it was like seven and six for the original, four, four, six and five for the original. After four hours and 14 minutes, the Perfect Draft Pro had it down to three degrees C. The original, five degrees C. And it took the original until four hours, 50 minutes to get to that three degrees C. Now, to be fair, I expected more from the Perfect Draft Pro there. I thought it was going to be straight in and kind of cooling and down to temperature. <laughs> Maybe my expectations are a bit too much, but within an hour, that's too much. It was too much. Then I thought, you know, it's got to calibrate. It's got to get its gear going. It's a fridge. I mean, it may well be different when you're putting the next keg in. Now, the thing is about the Pro, because that is a fridge in there, 
you know, a proper fridge all the way around rather than that kind of cooled metal plate. The consistency of that temperature, when it gets a bit warm and in this kind of pub shed that I've done, it does get a bit warm in the summer months. I'm hoping this stays consistent. Can't tell you that now, but I will tell you that people in the future. Yes, I will. So that is your cooling. What next? Noise. Now, I'm not sure if any of the noise from it's being picked up here, but let me tell you this, I doubt it is because that is silent. Let me put my lug hole to it. There's a very quiet hum, a very, very quiet hum. Let me go to this. Pretty much the same. Obviously, there'll be a bit of noise when the compressor kicks in. Let's have a look at what that's like but generally the noise is low. If you've got one that is humming like a hummingbird, mm -mm -mm, <laughs> probably something wrong with it, maybe, because that, that ain't noisy. I'll tell you what I can really hear, my sub cold fridge again. Yeah, yeah, that, that's noisy. And to be quite honest, it's got hardly anything in it. I'm tempted to switch it off. Anyway, that's irrelevant. So the only other thing that I can comment on before getting into the pour, because I've got a little idea around the pour as well, is warranty. Now, my experience of the Philips Perfect Draft warranty is none. Nothing's ever gone wrong with it. So it has got that tried and tested kind of time element to it. It's done well, hasn't it? Let's face it, it's a solid machine. This does seem like a solid machine. Can't really comment on that. But it is one of those things that might be a doubt at the back of people's minds because in the end of the day, Philips, you know, you do see some good stories. You send off your machine, I think it's like 50 notes, the fix it, it's back, and it's back quick. Is that going to be the same for this Perfect Draft Pro? Time will tell. We will hear stories. And bold is news that will report on those stories. Right, this is what it's all about. It's all about the pour, yeah? We want the beer, people. That's what we want. So what I'm going to do is this. You can't compare the pour of a Bud Light, that most exciting of lagers, to an Orchard Pig Cider. That's going to tell you nothing. Zippity-doo, zilch, diddly-squat. So I'm not going to do that, not one bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour out of the original Perfect Draft. I'm going to pour myself a pint of Bud Light. I'll pop it here, have a little look at it. Not for long though, because I'm going to detach that Bud Light. I'm going to put it into the Pro. I'm going to pour it out the Pro. Then we'll have a look, side by side. We'll have a look at that. We'll have a look at one to the other and see which looks the best. I'm going to pop in here. <laughs> here I go. Right. <laughs> Anyway, don't know why that's that funny. I've got two of your goose, two of the goose glasses. They're gonna be in the same glass, people, and yes, they are nucleated. Can't see that from there, but they are. Right, let's go for the pour from the original Perfect Draft. Here we go. It's Bud Light. It's Bud Light. Right, now as you can see, that is genuine, 100%, 100% first pour from Baldy. You can see that, because look at that foam head, and it is the first pour. It will settle, but that is the first pour of that keg, right there. And I think that counts for something. I've done nothing to wet the whistle, nothing at all there. Let's get that keg out quick before disaster strikes. Let's get it into the pro. I do like that door just there. There's less, less swingage of that door. You know what I mean? You only open it one way like that rather than both of them going. That, that's easier. We're going in. There we go. I'm a bit cack handed there, but we're going in. Easy does it, in she blows, close you goes, close she goes. The Bud Light is now in the Perfect Draft Pro. So just that quick swappage there, 
the original straight up saying five degrees C for that orchard pick. And let's face it, that was out a matter of seconds because of boldest swift kind of exchange. Now onto the pro, that is still snaking around, isn't it? It's looking, it's checking. It doesn't know what's going on. At the moment, I don't know what that's down to. Okay, so what we can say is that the perfect draft original is now down to three degrees. It's been a matter of seconds. This is still flicking round, but if you're confident it's cold, you can still pour it. So I'm gonna pour it because let's face it, we pretty much know that was three degrees. And I don't want this to go totally flat on me before um, that springs up. So let's go. This is my first one. This is my first pull of the Perfect Draft Pro. I'm excited. Okay. So immediate impressions was that's not quite. What I'm going to do is run both of those kind of bits of footage together um, just to see what the difference is in head. But this is the very first pour from here. Now, some people may say, but Boldy, that pipe wasn't being chilled quite as much as what it normally would be because it was in the original. Let's not get that too detailed, people. Let's not go down that path. But what I'm looking at right now is this. I'm looking at these two pints side by side. I really am. They're like brothers in arms. Both been handled by the perfect draft, by the perfect draft system, but one by the pro, one by the original. I'm looking at it. I'm seeing zero difference in carbonation. Probably slightly faster moving bulbs from the pro, but maybe there's been a little bit of time for that to slow down from the original one. This has obviously lost its head because I was faffing about changing the kegs. Clarity wise, they're identical, absolutely identical. I guess there would be. If I was going to say I noticed one slight difference with it, this has got a bit more of a compact foam head on the Pro compared to what the original had. That, people, is my first impressions. But it's about the suppage, isn't it? Let's have a sup. <laughs> it's about the suppage. I mean, what you have got to say is obviously all the techy tech kind of fancy gimmetry that there is on this, and you can still forget to pull out the drip tray. Now, which I did, but all the fancy, fancy gadgetry that you get on this, it didn't tell me straight away, like the original did, what the temperature was of that keg. That, that's been confidently displaying both five, four, and three degrees straight away. I banged that keg in, it knew what was going on. This, this is still, I don't know, ticking round, going, in circles, it wants to communicate to me app. Me app's going not here or something like that, probably. In the end of the day, you can't just tell me straight off the bat, can it? Right. But here we go. Right, this does seem to be, I know this, is, this has been poured longer, but this does seem to be keeping its head slightly better, I would say. I'm going to go for the original first. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, first beer out the pro, and it's a Bud Light. Cheers, people. Okay, I'm not gonna to go too much into the taste of it because I will be doing a review of the Bud Light for what that's worth. But basically, temperature-wise, yeah. I've had many a lager out of that original Perfect Draft. It's good. Three degrees for a lager, yeah. You can't moan like that. And the mouth feel and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, it's, it's Bud Light. Right, then onto this. This is from the Pro. Yeah, I'd say it does feel slightly more carbonated from the Pro. And that head does, <laughs> it does actually look like it's going down slightly better. Both identical glasses there, cleaned, both with eco washing up liquid. Mm. 
very little difference in taste. I don't think there's any difference in taste whatsoever. Um, slightly more carbonation, it feels out of the Pro, might just be coincidence, might be just because that one has stood probably for about a minute and a half more, probably two. So yeah, in terms of your taste of a lager there, what I would say is zero difference, zero difference, but there we go. Right. That's the taste, that's the pour, there we go. Judge as you will. I will put both of those videos, like I say, side by side, so that you can see both of them. Might zoom in a little bit. What do you think? That is the initial pour from the Pro and the initial pour from the original. So before I sign off, the killer question is, should you buy the Perfect Draft Pro? And to answer that question, people, I've put together Boldy's advice chart. Here it is. What I've thought is there's three influencing factors to if you should buy the Perfect Draft Pro. Those being this. How long have you owned the original? Or have you got one at all? That's the first thing we need to take into account. The next thing is the temperature. Because that is the major difference between the two. Right? So basically, what temperature do you need for what you like, right? So you can go from zero to 12 with the Pro. We're gonna look on this chart and see if it's a tick for yes, you should plump for a Pro, or a cross for just a stick with your original, or maybe even just buy an original, because it's cheaper if you haven't got one. Okay, so here's my handy table to tell you if you should buy a Perfect Draft Pro. Basically, if you've just purchased an original, it's a no across the board, same if you've had one six months. If you've had one a year, then it's pretty much a no unless you're really into that higher temperature that a Belgium ale or a stout requires. That's what I'm saying. Now, two years, if you've owned one for two years and you really, really like either a cold, cold lager or a cider nowadays, an IPA that will be a bit warmer, Belgium ale the same, or a stout, then that's when I'm saying yes. But if you're just into your lagers, I'm saying it's still a no at that point. Beyond that time, I'm saying you could plump for a pro. And obviously right at the bottom there, if you haven't got one at all at this point, just go straight for the pro. There's my table, that's what I'm saying. So basically, bold is on the fence. I'm not gonna go, yeah, grab it, it's the best machine ever. But what I will say is, it's got a fantastic build quality. It looks good in my opinion. The feel of it is solid. It's absolutely solid. When I saw pictures of it, I thought it might be a little bit too plasticky. It might not feel good. It does feel good. The hum of it, that feels like it's a quality machine, a proper beer pump. When you're pulling that beer, that feels a bit better than the original. It does, it feels a bit more solid. It's a bit more the actual compressor there, when that's kicking in, that's proper quality, it feels good. We can't comment on the longevity of this baby, not yet, we can't. So that we can't take into account. So that's why it's so hard to recommend and it totally, for me, comes down to how important that temperature range is. The app's nice, but it's a bit of a gimmick. That's all it is really. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that people. Please, if you've got a pro, comment below let me know what you're thinking to it. If you're considering one, please ask questions. I'll take a look. I'll have a look at anything. You know, if you want to know the measurement of that handle just there, or you're questioning why the little rubber spout bit comes out the bottom, ask it. I'll see what I can do. I'll answer it. I like to answer people. So yeah, please comment below. If you haven't seen my videos before because you're considering a Perfect Draft Pro and that's why you've come across this now, please subscribe to the channel because if you ever get one, it'll be a good channel for you, hopefully, hopefully. But beyond all of that, people, and I know this has been a little while coming, but I wanted to make it a half decent review. Beyond all of that, it's summertime. It's a happy time. No matter what machine you've got, if you've got a sub, a blade, a Perfect Draft Pro, the original, whatever you've got, or if you've just got a few tinnies, a few bottles, and the cool, happy days. Enjoy your beer, enjoy the sun, have an absolute belter of a weekend, people. But for now, cheers, Perfect Drafters. Cheers. Yeah.